So I settled in what was a just beginning to develop spiritual community. The town had gotten electricity and a road like three, four years before I got here. So everything was small and I found a place to live and um, began doing therapy and had a visit from the cacao spirit. And, you know, when I got here, I had missed the early part of the raw foods movement. So, um, because I was too busy caving and climbing and running around the blank spot on other people's maps. And uh, so I met in meditation, this great big spiritual energy and it felt wonderful. And when I figured out it was the spirit of chocolate, I said, you know, oh, this is, this is a joke. <laughs> You know, I know chocolate's good for PMS and, you know, I like it, but um, this energy is not Hershey's. Mm. So what is going on? Anyway, I said yes, because I like the energy. Mm. And a week and a half later, I was in the coastal rainforest mountains on the other side of the volcanoes from here. And I saw my first cacao trees and I saw cacao beans drying in people's yards. And so I asked if I could buy some chocolate from them. And they said, no, you can't. But if you come back in a week, we'll have some made for you. So a week later, I, it takes about five hours to get there on buses and pickup trucks and 45 minutes walk up into the mountains on a little trail. And so a week later, I had my cacao, brought it back here, had a cup the next morning, and in about an hour, I sat down with the cacao spirit, rang her up on the cosmic telephone that everyone has that we've all been taught we don't have, where you can talk to anybody, past, present, or future, living or dead, uh, whatever. Um, and I said, all right, I have one of this planet's most important medicine plants, magic plants, facilitators, running around in my system. But it doesn't work like anything I've ever had. And like many people these days, I've been with the shamans from psychedelic use and cultures. Mm. And the cacao was not taking me on a trip, but the doors were open. So I began drinking it every day, just like you do. Yeah. And I began learning. And the cacao spirit kept, you know, like gently pushing. And I'm going like, nah, nah, this is so obvious. There's at least 10 people out there. And some of them like doing websites. And I don't know anything about websites. So I don't, you know, I'm just going to enjoy this cacao. And she's, she just kept telling me, learn, learn, get on the web. And back then, town didn't have internet. This was circa, what, 2000? 2003. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The town had a little internet cafe mm -hmm. uh, connected to a restaurant. And so what people did was you would go in to the cafe and you would copy and paste your emails into a Word doc and bring it home and answer it at home. And several days later, go back to the ca cafe and <laughs> upload everything. And if one person started to watch a YouTube video or their computer started an auto download, the guy would come running out, all right, who's doing the download? Because no one else had any bandwidth. <laughs> so that's how I started. And the cacao spirit kept saying things like, um, you're going to have to know about fair trade and commodities markets mm. because you're going to become an international chocolate expert. And I'm going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I kept accumulating stuff in the computer, studying it and reading it. I started reading anthropological journals. I started reading um, papers, dozens and dozens of papers in a medical journal with a medical dictionary open on a half screen. Um, and I learned. That moved into three years of travel from southern Mexico to Panama. I bought cacao in markets. I visited growers. I visited indigenous people. I visited chocolate making workshops. And I would accumulate a box, little bags of beans with a label in the truck. And then, you know, just for research purposes, have to go to the beach or way up into the mountains <laughs> somewhere. Sounds like and, fun research. <laughs> yeah. You know, bathtub warm water in Costa Rica yeah. or um, a place way, way out there 
in the uh, in the jungle. What, what was the range of cacao like when you were sampling it over that period? Well, that was the interesting thing. I could sample two batches a day, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Mm. And uh, what I learned was that cacao or chocolate beans were incredibly variable. Mm. Some of it was basically worthless for the energies that I wanted. And some of it was various levels of strength all the way up to being the same as the first stuff that I had run into. And being back in Guatemala and going out and going to a like a wholesale city market where I could go around and find somewhere between 30 and 40 different batches of cacao beans. By then, I could feel the energy of the beans. I would eat a bean, tune into its taste, uh, which is, of course, pretty obvious, mm. and then feel the energy mm. and literally find one batch of beans out of that 30 or 40 that I wanted that had both a decent flavor and an amazing amount of it doesn't taste good mm. and had the energies. And because I couldn't just go buy the chocolate and I'm living in one of the chocolate making countries of the world. I can't just go out there and buy it. I started making it myself mm. and I would spend a day. I would toast five pounds of beans in a big fry pan on the kitchen stove and hand peel them. It took an hour to hand peel a pound. And the next, next day, my worker, we would take our t-shirts off and we would put it through a hand grinding mill three times. It took three hours to grind one pound of chocolate. Wow. And that's how I started. An effort. So I had a grain mill down here from yeah. my 1970 days as a back to the land hippie and then <laughs> it started grinding chocolate. So th this is amazing to hear this story because it, it's you, you say that the cacao spirit really called you, but they, I think that gives some context to how much energy and effort it really took. Like it, it wasn't like you could just start eating chocolate. You went through quite an incredible journey to, to start understanding it and to, yeah. to start making it the way you do now. And that's the purpose of the website this is to share what I've learned so other people don't have to go through that learning curve mm. if this is the kind of chocolate they're interested in.